Bonjour et bienvenue sur le vlog de cette semaine. Hello and welcome to this week's angling vlog. This week you join me on the beautiful banks of Ragon. It's a French lake and we're in search of carp. So Ragon is situated on the outskirts of a quiet, peaceful little village called Saint Paris La Chatelle. Saint Paris La Chatelle is a quiet little French village, as you can see on screen now. It is quite weird on the way to it though, on the outskirts you do pass like a MotoGP track and you will probably hear that in the background of the vlog. There isn't a lot of information out there about this venue. It's a new venue to Angling Lines. So the first thing that I'm going to cover in the vlog is a look around the venue because when I was coming out here, like I said, there wasn't a lot of information. Right, so like I said, there's not much information available online about the lake because um, it is a new lake to Angling Lines and as you can see on screen now, coming down, you've got a really sturdy track to come down to. Coming onto the venue, you can see you've got the track coming down so you can get your van right down. That amenity over there is the shower and the toilet. It's a compost toilet and then you've got a sink. And on screen now, you can see all the facilities there that you've got over there. Nice and close to where you're fishing. If I pan round, you've got the main little hut. And as you can see there, we're just going to have a walk around the lake in a minute with Mark. So we'll have a look at the hut. You've got a gas-powered fridge. What we've been doing is we've been putting the main bit of food up by the farm, as you can see on screen now, and then just bringing down um, a day or two's worth of food for the fridge. In here, I say we won't be using this that much, but you have got a gas cooker there. We used that last night when we first got here. Nice and easy. Table. There's two beds in there. One thing to say is it is solar powered. You've got the plugs down there. So it's the first day for us, so we don't really know how good or bad that is. Coming round, you can see the main veranda looking out onto the lake. Now, there are swims all the way round. Uh, the down wall swims over there. We did see a few carp in that far corner when we walked round yesterday. But as you can see, plenty of banking and weed in that corner you've got weed out in front here and if you look out to the main spit now there was three of us due to come and obviously we'd have been spread out a bit more but with two of us on the bank we've got a lake exclusive so plenty of water there are weed beds out there but we'll go more into that when we look at the swim we just set up on the spit as you can see nice short walk to the bivvies and you know the barbecue all ready for you just bring some coals and then you look down the left hand side of the lake and we've got the rods out at the moment just going to go for a wander and as we go for a walk down there i'll show you a few more clips of the lake for those looking for information on it hopefully that helps you out you get a bit of an idea what you're coming to it is a beautiful lake and pitch black at night beautiful stars really is beautiful so we're gonna have a walk around now and i'll show you a couple of pictures of the shallow end of the lake and there we go there's the bottom corner of the lake and this is really weedy down here but like that's your type of fishing you can see there's plenty of ground to set up on uh for me i'm just going to keep an eye on the area walk it regular and have a bit of a cast around now with the rod just to see if there's any clear patches that we can target but that's a look around the venue and the facilities if you're looking to come. And hopefully, if you do, it helps you out a bit. So the end of the Sunday. I had a little try down the lake this morning. Um, no success, but did see one or two carp mooching about. So been good to spend a full day on the lake. And the rods are all out and we'll go over the spots tomorrow. Sit back, enjoy this beautiful lake because it is a beautiful, peaceful lake. And hopefully, you know, one of the rods will go tonight. Fingers crossed.
So what a start to Monday morning. The first full night on the water was a lot more alive than any other night. The fish were crashing all night. Just on first light, as you can see behind me, the rod screamed off on that middle rod and this 26 pound common, the reward. A new PB for me most definitely, which my PB before this was 21 pound. So with the stock of the lake, pretty much guaranteed to beat it. Because Mark's next to me with a bucket of water, so no doubt he's dying to chuck it on me. So let's get a straight back after Mark <laughs> gets to soak me. Go on. PB! <laughs> and there we go. Let's get it straight back. So since we've had that carp this morning, it's been a busy morning, getting a lot done. This morning we nipped to the supermarket and like I said at the start of the vlog, there's not a lot of information out there on this pool. So if anyone's watching it and they've typed it into the search engine and are thinking of coming out, then there's a little town about 10 minutes um, south that's got an attack um, little supermarket. And if you're looking for any supplies, you know, basic supplies, they even had replacement head torches there if you get stuck. And then we moved up to Magnico to the main um, supermarché up there. And that was a lot bigger and had a lot more stuff in it as well. Even a spot to do your laundry. And there's also a petrol station there as well if you want to fill up on the way home. Looking back on the peg, we'll go over what we've been doing so far. We've been out in the boat. Yep, Danny's been out in the boat, life jacket on, and uh, they had me GoPro on, so I'll put a bit of footage on now of Danny and Mark sailing. As you look at the swim, that's where we've been staying, got the chair out, and I look at the weather, it's a lot cooler today, and as you can see on screen now, the forecast for the rest of the week is for a lot cooler conditions, but that's where they've been staying. Bit organised for me, got all my stuff on that. Keeping drop food to a minimum because there are rats about. But that's my little station for getting all my rigs sorted. I've been sent me two lucky charms from the kids. If you watch the channel regular, no surprise that Joshy gave me a dinosaur for good luck and Abby made me a bracelet. Really, I'm missing the family. It's the longest I've ever been away from my partner in 15 years and my kids since they were born so yeah that part of it is a bit different as you pan round couldn't go without the shaky box and the cloves as we come out we'll have a quick look at what we've been doing when we arrived on the first day we found a clear spot six and a half wraps out in line with that tree there the run last night come six and a half wraps again off that tree there Nice little markers. And the third rod I had in line with that tree there, the third tree in. And I haven't had any coots or anything on me on that line and no indication. So I've literally, when we've come back, put a bait, 11 wraps, just off that reed bed with the bait boat and just put bait out there. And if nothing, comes round it like the birds I'll probably leave that tonight and just see how it does so hopefully it's the start of them coming on the feed and we can get one or two fish at the moment we just need one more you know for Mark to get one and we'll go home happy well that's what we're doing hopefully it gives you a bit of an insight into the areas I'm going to sit back now I'm going to have a beer and chill out
when a move pays off, a move pays off. We'll talk more about that in a minute. How do you feel about that, Mr. Fandango? Spot on, matey. Well done, matey. Have we worked hard there to get them? Let's get it in the edge to rest and get a picture of it. Good work, mate. Well done. Good work, mate. So, really quick update. As you've seen, Mark's had that beautiful 48 pound carp this morning. You see the bivvies over there, we've moved spots. A lot of weed over there, they're not sure whether you're fishing or not. And then a third night with no bites, it was time to move. So, we've moved down here. We've got Mark there on the damn wall, and me there. I've got a rod round about here, and we've put a line of bait in front of the swim and Mark's got a rod there Mark's got one down the margin and I've got one down that margin there now we've seen carp down there and also there's been carp boshing down there as well so confident the main thing about this swim tonight is we know we're fishing sometimes over there you'd reel in and there was patches of weed between you and your spot you know quite close in and then on your spots two yards either way you could be in weed and floating weed kept pushing through as well getting on your line at least here we know we're fishing it's clear the bottom's clear we've got the bait out and we know now that we're fishing we've got rigs on that we are confident are working whereas over there you know you'd reel in like i said sometimes and you would reeling a mat of weed and as you can see it was a bit shallower down there so the coots were always on you whereas here hopefully we can keep them off us and the only you know things that are going to be our bait are the carp So Thursday morning, and although it looks beautifully warm, like predicted last night, it really did drop the temperature. It was down to, I think it was four degrees. It really felt it. And sat last night, there was one or two fish boshing over there. It was the first night that I actually felt like I had fish on me in the week. You know, that they were near me. When we were up there, that 27 pound carp just come out the blue. But last night I could hear them boshing as we were watching a bit of football. Now, woke up this morning and the coots have moved down from where they were. So, yeah, not ideal. But it has been tough. It's been really tough. Down this end of the lake, you are at the deeper end of the lake. So the hoping is that with it being cold, they do move down. But the angler in me just knows how, you know, then first drops in temperature do affect waters, don't they? But I'm not one really for making excuses. It's been tough fishing and I've done all I can now. I've got a spot there, a spot down the margin and one out in front. We've got two more nights and hopefully we just get one more carp. That's the hope now. Um, when it's fishing, it doesn't always go to plan. It's not always, you know, flowers and roses and sweet singing. Sometimes it just doesn't happen, but fingers crossed, it can. When we first arrived, Mark had that beautiful 48 pound carp, not long after casting in. And then that night he had that 37 pound common. And that night he did have a lot of fish boshing on him, but it was very quiet last night again over there. So it only takes one night for it all to turn around and hopefully over the next two nights, we can pick up a fish. Well, part of the routine each day has been to mix up the mix for the evening so it can soak. In there, I've got Cheshire Particle um, Micro Mix and the Multi Mix together. There's the Hinders Bicinana Boilies. I've got some Hinders Pellets, some of the smaller pellets, mixed pellets in there as well. And that's just with the Bicinana Food Glug in it. Just leave it to soak there's a lot of small fish in the lake which we didn't know about before we come 
so you know it feeds everything and hopefully you know gets them carp in on the spot you know you're talking about big carp like you've seen with Mark's ones so you've got to put the food in to attract them in not been putting loads in and say just feeding enough to get a bite at the moment and try and attract fish in on some of the spots we're working together you know to put a line of bait in front of the peg and on others obviously the margin spots you're just trying to attract them fish in and hopefully over the course of the next couple of days that we've got left Mr Carp will find this better bait So the setup we're going to be using this week is the Corum Zelos 6000 mini pit reels loaded with 15 pound line. Got some 12 foot 3 pound test curve Shimano velocities. Obviously, the lake does hold fish, so over 50 pound, so you need a bit of stopping power. And you can see there the old Delks. Nice, simple setup strong and reliable so it's the end of a long week we've been all over the lake literally all over it we started off on the spit and then we moved over there and mark had those two lovely carp and we thought we were in the right area clear spots and at the start of this week i did mention about the weather and before we came i said the weather was going to drop and on the weather app, it was going to go from 20 degrees to around about 10, you know, 9 degrees at night was the was what it was saying. The reality was the cloud cover didn't arrive and we were left with bright skies for three days and the temperatures of 3 and 4 degrees at night. And as you can see on screen now, it was that cold. I actually had me blanket and me cover on me and... It hit the fishing hard. We didn't get a run between six rods in two days, was it, Mark? Three days. Three days. You know, Mark had two off that spot when the conditions were, were okay before the drop. And we had one, two, a spot in front, shared, and then my two rods to the right, not a run. Not a run in, in three days. We had a good times, you know, going to bed at night full of excitement and then waking up in the morning with nothing happening. Very few signs on this lake of the carp as well to go on. We've walked the whole lake looking, you know, the snakes on the other side, which our Abbey would love and, and that. But we've looked and looked and looked. It's a hard lake for spotting fish at the best of times, it seems. But we did try everything. This afternoon, what we've done... Decided to come back to the cabin. Um, Mark's getting his gear packed away. He's not going to fish tonight. He's going to say, put the rods out. I'm putting the rods out just for the hope of one last fish. You know, it's, you never know with the rods in the water. I'm going to sleep here tonight with the rods out. All the gear's slowly getting packed away for an early dart tomorrow. And fingers crossed. It's not even tea time. And it's ripped off. And he's into a fish, let's hope it's a lump. Right, Friday afternoon, and we decided to give it one last go on the spit, you know, during the night. My target before this was a 30 pound fish. I said on the way I'd be happy if I got a 30 pounder. After about two hours of the rod being out, this is screamed off. Just over 30 pound, 30 pound, six ounces. A beautiful common carp. I want to thank two people really for this one. Mark, because it's been a hard week and we've worked together. We really have and now we've got what we all come for and we're going home mega happy but also i want to dedicate this to 
Abby, Josh and Lucy, who have missed like mad this week. It's the longest I've been away from them ever in 15 years of being together. So that's for you guys. Be home soon to see you. One happy Danny. Let's get it straight back. When we set off on this journey, we were talking about things we wanted to happen, you know, in an ideal situation. Mark's was obviously to come France and get a common, which he smashed out the park with that near 40. And then he beat his PB with that biggest carp I've ever seen in my life, that four near 50 pound carp. And mine was a 30 pound fish. I said, if we got one, I'd be happy. And it's taken all week to open up the JD. So I'm gonna sit back, enjoy this. So the final supper is on. One thing we have done this week is at well. And if you do want to fish from the cabin, that is, you know, what it gives you. It has been okay. And so we've not been the greatest for keeping the meat fresh. It doesn't last too long, but we've been quite cool. We've done okay. Looking over the lake, what has been beautiful this week is seeing them swans fledge. They started off at the start of the week, just going from one end to the other. And then they went a bit further. And then this morning, they took off and disappeared. And I thought that was them gone. And he did a big lap around the lake. Hopefully, before we go, we'll capture them again. But it has been great just to, to see how the you know, push them on and make them go a bit, you know, a bit more each time. He's done well tonight, Marcus. Done a few teas this week. I've cooked the odd one, nearly killed us. But that is a perler. What a tea to go home on. Right, so sadly, that is the end of the week. You see the van all packed up behind us. And the lake, as you can see on screen now, has treated us to one of those beautiful sunrises that we got on the spit at the start of the week. Looking back on the week from a fishing point of view, it's easily been one of the hardest weeks fishing that I've ever done, both mentally and from a fishing point of view. The lake behind me is beautiful, it really is, and I've enjoyed every minute on the bank. So one of the hardest parts about the week, apart from the weather, has been trying to locate the fish. It's a decent bit of water, and I've lost count how many times me and Mark have walked around just looking for fish. Fish by their general nature don't show themselves that often, or at least they didn't on the week we were here. Maybe during the day you might get three or four shows and they would be in different areas of the lake. So not really giving you much to build on. But from a fishing point of view, most definitely this week, the weather has played a part. I didn't know a drop in temperature was coming. So we were down the bottom end of the lake in the deeper water you know, nine foot of water, and we did know that that drop was coming. What we didn't know is how different the drop would be. It was predicted to go down to about eight degrees and 14 in the day with the cloud cover, but that cloud cover didn't arrive. What happened was we had clear skies in the day, 20 odd degrees in the day, as you can see, got a cracking tan, but at night it dropped to around about four degrees. And from that point, three days of no bites was forthcoming. We had the rods on spots that we knew were clear, little and often with the bait, very few signs of fish showing and waking up in the morning, you know, to quiet rods. It was tough to know what to do. The last day we did decide to drop on that cabin and yeah, with the rods out, out of nowhere, the rods screamed off with that 30 pound carp. And at the start of the week, we both did say what we would like if we could have something from the week. Mine was a PB, which the PB being 21 pound, could have took one fish from this lake. And I was hoping for the 30 pound carp. So we are leaving with a few fish, but quality fish and what we wanted. I got me 30 pounder, Mark got his common, and he got a new PB. On top of that, I've had a fantastic time on the bank with Mark. 
you know, the social side of it's been immense. Sitting out, having a beer of an evening, just chilling out. It's been really good. On that note, I'd like to thank Mark for all his help with the carping. None of them two fish would have been possible without his help and tuition during this week and the two years building up to it, really. And that's a thank you to you, Mark. Thank you very much, mate. And on that, I'm looking forward now to getting home to see my little boys and my missus, who I have not seen for a week, and I have missed them. I hope you've enjoyed this blog. Like the channel, it's real fishing. Sometimes you don't get as many fish as you want, but I'm leaving happy, and I know Mark is too. I want to thank you all very much for watching. I want to wish you all tight lines in your own fishing, and I'll catch you all next week.